How do you like my hairstyle? I am trying to channel a bit of the 60s, which is kind of the theme for the next few videos. I had the incredibly good fortune of finding a few things that either need mending, knitting, or sewing from the 60s. So I thought that I would get all in the theme for today's video. We're gonna be focusing on mending today. A few months ago, I had the incredibly good fortune to get a 1960s Harris Tweed winter coat at an incredible steal because unfortunately it had quite a few holes in the collar. I decided to get it anyway because I had heard of this mending technique that is called, I believe, kaket Tsugi. Here's the name of it, and it basically means to reweave patches of the fabric into the main fabric over where the holes are. I am not trained in this technique. If you look at videos of it, it is magical. The before and afters are seamless, and I think it looks so cool. I will try the technique of reweaving or harvesting bits of fibers from one part of the coat in order to reweave over the holes. I would like it to look generally as nice as I can, but I am less interested in it looking nice and more interested in it being structurally sound. Before we dive straight into amending my coat, a few things. The 1960s is the earliest I've ever gone in terms of vintage, so I don't know a ton about this era and I don't know a ton about the fashion of this time period. Mainly have this look inspired from Bridget Bardot and pictures of my grandmother. And secondly, if you don't know what Harris Tweed is, it is a weaving company that is located in the Hebrides in Scotland. Scotland. It's all still locally woven and then you can buy the raw fabric itself or they make it into bags, coats, jackets, vests, all kinds of things. I'm going to really quickly interrupt myself here and highly recommend that you watch this video of Women of the Outer Hebrides performing and singing a walking song to finish off some Harris Tweed that was filmed in the 1940s. I love watching fiber and textile traditions like this. I think it's really beautiful and I'll leave the link down in the description below to this video. I think we've gone over everything so why don't we jump straight to inspecting the holes in this particular coat and mending them. I really inspected this coat as closely as I could and of course before I added it to the rest of my collection it went through a lovely freeze cycle to make sure nothing else could get to the rest of my wool stash and the main culprits or the only culprits were in the collar. There was one very large hole and two smaller pinholes. So the first thing that I did was unpick the collar piece so that I would have full access to the front and the back of the holes. The most important thing to me, like I said before, was to make sure that these were structurally sound. This is a coat I would like to wear, so I don't want the holes to get worse. And so I needed access to the back of the holes in order to put some interfacing in there to keep them sound. Went harvesting for some thread to be able to reweave some of the holes. I had some easy options at some of the seams here, which they didn't finish off fully, um, but it really wasn't enough to fill the large hole. So I went for the inside seam hem of one of the fronts of my jacket to figure out if I could potentially harvest enough of that thread to reweave over the hole. I know this looks really painful and trust me, I think you could see my hands were literally shaking when I was cutting this fabric out, but I truly tried to cut just only what I needed and to place my cuts in such a location that they wouldn't be visible and they would be okay structurally with the rest of this coat when it's, it was worn. So it was something that I could patch over and make sure that it stayed in place. The first reweaving that I did was over the pinholes because I didn't really need a patch for this. I just used some of the threads that I was able to salvage and weaved in the right colors in the right patterns over the pinhole and I think that that hid them once I added a few more strands that I needed. It hid the holes quite well. However, when I got to the large hole and trying to film doing this technique, while doing it for the first time, you can see I got mainly just very blurry close-up shots of the back of my hand. So it wasn't very good footage at all. So rather than showing me my very poor attempts, why don't we look at a professional doing work in her studio, which is truly incredible. You can see that she takes a patch of material here and she is going to lightly reweave all of the fibers all the way around the patch through the existing 
fabric on the right side of the fabric matching up the patterns exactly. Her work is immaculate. It is so beautiful to watch. Again, I'm going to leave the link for the video in the description so that you can watch the full entire bit of the magic that she works. It's so fascinating. I am not an expert in this subject. This is just what I learned from reading about it and watching these videos. But once all of the ends are weaved in, then it comes the part where I think you're really working on the structural integrity. So you're making sure that things are ironed out fully straight and lined up well. And then what I believe is being done is like a a heat soluble string is being placed so that the extra patch won't unweave itself over time and then a fusible interfacing is put on top so that really helps the structural integrity of this piece and after this solid pressing and the removal of the extra fibers on the outside I mean it's invisible what wonderful work I'm so impressed and even if you don't want to try this technique yourself, there are a lot of places, both in Japan and I think in your local countries, that practice a technique like this where you can send your clothes to be mended to. This is my attempt. Um, not as pretty, but serviceable. Again, I'm not really going for looks. I just want to go for structure. And now I'm trying to cut out interfacing in order to add to the support over this hole. Oh, this is what I get for going to Anne's uh, late at night. And then I spent most of my time just casually browsing until they made the announcement that it was closing in five minutes. So I was like, oh, I still have to grab the lining or the interfacing. And I grabbed it and I ran. And of course I grabbed the sewing interface. The good news is, is I get to go to Joanne's again tomorrow. <laughs> After a finally successful run to Joanne's where I got the fusible interfacing, I cut that to the appropriate size, both for the patch that I did on the big hole and the smaller pinholes. And then I ironed it with a lot of steam and on a pretty high heat to the back of the holes that I mended. I really wanted to use this fusible interfacing to hold my mends in place so that it didn't become unwoven and that the ends that had frayed from the hole previously didn't want to unravel themselves anymore. So this was really where I was trying to get all of the structure and the integrity back into the collar. And now my mends were done. So it was time to do really just the cleanup where I snipped off the extra length of my fibers on the front. I had left them long until the feasible interfacing was on just to give them a little bit more structure before I snip those off. So that's the pinhole that I fixed. And here is the end result of the larger hole. Again, it's not perfect. And you can see that the fabric isn't as thick where the hole was when you hold it up to the light. And it's definitely not as smooth as the professionals do it, but I think it's smooth enough and blended in enough that you won't really see it from a distance when I'm wearing the coat. And like I keep on saying, most importantly, the hole won't get any bigger. To round out this mending process, I sewed on the patch to where I had harvested that bit of wool for the rest of my collar hole and that is now not visible at all from the front and then I had to sew the collar together. My antique machine goes through all of these layers of wool and interfacing like butter. I, this is one of the reasons why I love this machine. And then it was time for the final reveal. It was so much fun to learn new techniques to breathe some more life into vintage pieces that maybe had a little rough go of it. It's not perfect and my sewing's a little wonky, but I don't think it's too, too noticeable even from this close up. Maybe this will inspire you to try your hand at some sort of mending in the future too. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you again very, very soon for knitting and sewing a 60s sweater and skirt kit. Bye.